What's happening guys, it is Brian Alzer with NeverSayIt.com and a lot of you have been asking me about my past lifting history, what I've been up to for the last 23 years and how I got to the place where I am today. Some of you think I was involved in bodybuilding, some of you think that I was involved in powerlifting, some of you think that I was born with biceps and that I'm a genetic freak. I appreciate it, but none of that is true. So I decided to dedicate an entire video to telling you guys my story about my lifting journey, just where I've been, where I came from, and how I got to where I am today. So hopefully it inspires some of you, hopefully it helps some of you out, let's go. All right, so my obsession with muscles started when I was very young. I'm so old that He-Man was a massive influence in my life when I was five. So after He-Man, it was Ninja Turtles, it was a bunch of cartoons where guys have muscles, and then as I got older, I got real inspired by Arnold movies, by Sylvester Stallone, by Jean-Claude Van Damme. All the people that I looked up to have muscles, so I figured that I needed muscles too because muscles were cool. I still think muscles are cool. Anyway, I was a super active kid, and by today's standard, I would definitely be labeled hyperactive, but I was so active, in fact, that at a very young age, I would probably say probably nine or 10, my dad, who owned his own construction business, not time, but he was a construction worker, would take me onto the job sites because they couldn't handle my energy at home. So he'd take me on the job sites, and he would tell me to do random manual labor jobs, like take this lumber from here, to over there. And then once it was over there, he would say, okay, now take it back to where it was at the beginning. Or digging holes or sweeping out houses, but I was always involved in manual labor. When I was not doing stuff like that, I was always in the woods with my friends. So I grew up on a large piece of land that was mainly wooded, so a lot of my childhood was spent in those woods, climbing trees, building forts, building dams, playing war, doing whatever I could. Actually, I probably played more ninja than war. I was never into guns, I was always into hand weapons. I am good with nunchucks. I know you don't believe it. I'll show it one time on a video. Anyway, I had also heard about Herschel Walker getting as big and as strong as he was by doing nothing but pull-ups, push-ups, and sit-ups. So every single night, I would do pull-ups, push-ups, and sit-ups. Then when I was 13, my parents bought me a weight set. Now, if you guys came from my generation, if you're near my age, we didn't have the nice weight sets that people have today. Uh, these were plastic weights filled with concrete, Everyone had one. It was basically a bench that had fly attachments and a leg extension attachment, and I think I may have had maybe 100 pounds worth of weight. But I put it to good use, and every single day I would do pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, all variations of the bench from flat to incline, gajillion sets, flies, and leg extensions all the time. And I was spending a lot of time running. I played a lot of sports as a child and that continued on through high school, which I'll get into later. So from the ages of 13 to 15, I lifted every single day. I worked out constantly. I was a maniac. We didn't have the internet back then, so I had no idea what I was doing. I was literally just following a poster that came with the weight set of like doing bodyweight lunges, bodyweight squats, bench presses. I was just following that stuff, but I put 100% effort into it and I literally worked out every single day. I didn't know better, but it ended up okay. So at 15, right before I got my license, I had been working out for two years and I thought I was pretty big and I was flexing for my mom as I probably did a lot. She could probably tell you more than I could, but I posed for a photograph so we could compare with later. This is me at 15 years old. This is right before I got my license. So as you guys can see, look at the size of my head compared to my arms. I was not born with these biceps. As you guys can see, uh, I was a skinny kid, always was. Uh, my problem was putting on weight, it was not keeping weight off, and part of that was because I was so active, and the other part of it was because I was working out like a maniac, I suppose, I don't know. But anyway, at 15, I was able to go into our weight room in my high school where the football coach taught a weight training class. Now this football coach is the same strength coach that was there for me, countless other people, as well as Mike Jenkins. We both went to the same high school, so we both came out of the same program. And this guy, his name is Gene Brown, and he was a huge influence as far as lifting weights go. And the reason why is because he would let us train anything we wanted in high school, which for me was usually curls. I didn't have curls then that I don't need to do curls anymore. But what he told us is that every single workout, you either had to bench, squat, or power clean first and then you could fill up the rest of the hour with whatever you wanted. So I got a good established idea of what exercises were important and what exercises weren't, and he would make fun of us if we spent all our time doing curls anyway. So he used to tell us that building bigger triceps would make your arms bigger. He said, because there are three muscles to tricep, there are two muscles to biceps to so work your triceps, and I took that to heart. So at 15 years old, I was getting ready to drive a car and I could not even bench press 95 pounds. However, 
I worked out like a maniac. No one outworks me. That is the one thing that I have going for me, and like I said in the last video, I am too stupid to know when to quit. So he would hand out sheets where it was like three sets of 10, five sets of five, four sets of six, those types of linear progression things, and I train with body part splits. Now when I say body part splits, it was mainly chest, back, legs, kinda, and probably chest, or arms. So I did that and worked out like a maniac for the entire years of my high school, and I did not really gain much at all. I would say that I graduated high school at probably 170 pounds. So I played baseball very seriously throughout high school and I had a scholarship, but at the same time, I was doing martial arts like crazy. And then in 11th grade, one day during a sparring session, my knee got destroyed. I tore my MCL, my PCL, my patella tendon, my knee dislocated, my kneecap dislocated. When they popped it back in, it shattered. So that was the end of my baseball career. I lost my scholarships. There was nothing else going on, so I had to stay close to home for college because that's what we could afford and I had to commute there. But I did continue with martial arts. So when I got into college, the UFC had started probably around 92, 93, and I had just started learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I got super into it. So I was very into MMA. And for those of you who don't know, the bigger you are, it may be intimidating some people, but the bigger you are, typically the less dangerous you are because you can't move. So I stopped caring about gaining mass and I did continue to lift weights through college, but it was basically I would do a main muscle group, kind of like a bench press day slash back day, and then always between my sets, I was doing some form of conditioning because conditioning trumped strength in fighting. So after four years of doing that, I was probably at about 195 to 200 pounds at the end of college. Now I got my degree, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I did have a passion for lifting weights, so I decided to become a personal trainer. So for the next four years, I was a trainer at two different gyms and I worked like crazy. Worked out like crazy, got exposed to a lot of different types of lifting modalities. Some people were into bodybuilding, some people were into powerlifting, some people were into strongman. Mike had just started getting his strongman. But I was still into fighting, so I didn't care a ton about mass. I started caring more and more about performance and strength. Now, at this time, T Nation was the best resource that you had for any type of lifting material. So, I was reading absolutely everything they put out and I took it as gospel. They made fun of guys who didn't squat to parallel or guys who didn't train hard and that built a lot of my mentality. TC from the Atomic Dog days was amazing. He did so much to build a lot of what my mentality is today. I also credit my karate teachers and my family. They are hard people. But on T Nation there was an author named Chad Waterbury and he put out a program called the Waterbury Summer Project. And I was still doing linear progression, not really getting anywhere with it. I wasn't gaining mass. I really wasn't gaining that much strength. And in the Waterbury Summer Project, he introduced to me full body training, giant sets, and he also flipped the rep scheme. So I was used to doing three sets of 10 or four sets of eight, and he changed it to 10 sets of three. So I was still getting 30 total reps, but now instead of doing 100 pounds for 10, I was doing 300 pounds for three, still 30 total reps, and my body exploded. I finished out the Waterbury Starter Project and started doing my own program because I was a personal trainer. And then I started doing the antagonistic muscle groups that you guys see me doing now in the giant set form. I was still doing linear progression. I literally did linear progression probably for the next decade. But now that I was not chasing mass, mass was showing up. Just because I was getting stronger, my body was getting that different stimuli and my body reacts to lower reps. If I do sets of eight, 10 or 12, I may as well not be doing anything because I'm wasting my time. Nothing really happens. If I do sets at five or below, good things happen. So I was personal trainer training daily and I was probably overtraining to be completely honest with you by today's standards, but at that time it was just about putting in as much work as possible. I truly believe that if I worked hard enough that I could really accomplish anything. So that's what I did. Then 2006 came around and I got recruited to do a different job. As you guys know, I don't talk about it, but for that job, the conditioning needed to be high because you needed to pass PT tests, you needed to be able to fight, you needed to be strong. But I kept my giant sets and added more and more conditioning, very similar to how you see me training right now. And I was still doing linear progression. So I'd start out with 10 sets of three, trying to get as heavy as possible for four to six weeks. So I would start out with one weight and I keep a little bit in the tank every single time. And then by the end of four or six weeks, I pretty much was topped out and I knew where I was. After that, I would drop back to four sets of eight for another four to six weeks, pretty much to just give my body a break and kind of push up my conditioning. After four to six weeks of these sets of eight, then I would drop to five sets of five for another four to six weeks where I got a little bit heavier and started ramping up, 
before going back 10 sets of three, and I did this forever. I didn't do deloads. I would just continually try to push up my three rep max. And that went on for a very long time. Now, I can remember a point, probably in like 2008 to 2010, where 455 felt like the heaviest thing in the world, both on the squat and the deadlift. I would do it for triples, but I really didn't think that anyone could do more than that. I was the strongest guy in my gym. No one was doing 455, so I felt good about myself. And then I went on YouTube and made the mistake of looking at what like 150 pound people could do. And those guys were pulling like in the fives, somewhere in the sixes. It was mind boggling. So what happened was my preconceived glass ceiling kind of got shattered. And then I just started pushing my weights. Once I saw what was possible, it changed my paradigm. I no longer cared about being the strongest guy in the gym. Now I wanted to be the strongest guy that I could possibly find. And if you look back six years to my very first YouTube video, you will see a set of three for 500 on the squat, which was part of that linear progression, those 10 sets of three, and that was my top set. I was pretty impressed because I got 500 pounds, decided to put on YouTube. Six years later, here I am. I didn't start talking to the camera until about six months ago. All right, so then from the years of 2010 through about 2014, I tried 531, DUP, Cube, uh, a bunch of programs, and they all worked for me, but at the same time, I always kept the giant set antagonistic muscle group conditioning thing that I'm doing now. So I can't really say whether any of those programs were super successful or they weren't successful at all because I didn't really do the program as the author prescribed. I will say that all of them are awesome programs and they taught me a ton about programming. And then about two years ago, I started doing strongman movements. Now, if you wanna know how I got involved in strongman, I'm gonna leave a link to that video here. It's a pretty emotional story about my friend, Mike Jenkins why I got in a strong man, how I got started, and everything else, but uh, I'll let you click that link. I'm not really gonna go into it here. But the second that I started messing with strong man implements, my gym lifts skyrocketed. I've literally gained like 50 pounds on my deadlift, probably 80 pounds on my squat, probably 80 pounds on my overhead press, and it's all because I was using odd objects. So now when I go to a barbell, it feels like a toothpick, it's nothing. Like I've said before, if you guys wanna know how my traps got so big or my arms got so big, it's literally from the weighted pull-ups the weighted rows that I've been doing for the last decade and now all the strongman movements. My biceps and traps have grown considerably. If you guys look back at my old videos, it is 100% because of strongman movements. Just give them a try, man. And then another big jump for me was when I tried out Conjugate. Now I had read about Conjugate for years and everyone said how great it was and how amazing it was, but it was so confusing because it's a method. It's not a program. So I never really bought into it. I never tried it. I didn't have access to bands or chains. But now that I own my own gym, I figured I'd buy some bands, give it a try. I will say that the way that I lay out Conjugate and the way that I run it, I have never seen better results than what I have in the past eight months. Like I said before, my body likes the low reps and Conjugate plays to that fact. Now I'm having trouble staying in my weight class because my body's growing it and I'm not trying to make it grow. I'm trying to get as strong as possible and stay the same exact size, but that's not really that easy when your numbers are flying up as much as mine arm right now. Which brings us to right now. But I do hope some of you found this helpful. Hopefully you guys are a little bit inspired. If you are 15 years old and you are a little skinny guy like I was, that was after two years of training, people. Two years of training like a maniac. Some of you haven't trained for six months. Some of you have trained for four years. It doesn't matter. I was a skinny kid. I don't have the best genetics. Do I have bad genetics? No. But neither are you. You're an extremely fortunate individual. Most likely you were born with hands, with feet, without Parkinson's disease, without cerebral palsy. There are a lot of things that you have going for you. You keep complaining about being a skinny guy who wants to be bigger or a bigger guy who wants to be skinny. Be happy with what you have and work with that. Do not wish that you were somewhere else. Embrace the journey. Work as hard as you possibly can for what you want and you will get there. You know what beats genetics every single time? Mindset. And trying to use your genetics is nothing more than a big excuse because you don't want to put the work in. I'm not special, you're not special, but you can become special if you put the work in. Anyway guys, I hope this was helpful and I hope this fills you in on what I've been up to the past 23 years. I was never that into curls except for high school where I didn't get anything. My arms grew from weighted pull-ups, heavy rows, heavy deadlifts and then strongman movements. I'm not claiming to be an expert about any of this that I talk about on my channel. All that I'm trying to share is what has worked for me so that hopefully you can give it a try and it'll work for you and you won't have to take the time making the mistakes that I've made and you will get here much faster than 23 years. 
Thank you guys very much for watching. Go out and do something amazing with your lives. Do not take this gift for granted. Keep working hard, be nice to each other, and I will catch up with you later.